Well, I am truly and utterly overwhelmed. Where do I start? Hi guys and welcome once again to Piano and Keyboard Artist. This is video number 12 and um, before I jump into today's subject I just want to say I've been absolutely overwhelmed. My idea was to start a channel where I would talk about subjects that I loved and then you know slowly grow it from there. This is not a complaint by the way, I'm just being really really overwhelmed by uh, in, a, in a good way. I've just been I've been unprepared for the amount of feedback and traffic I've been getting and a video I put up um, about five days ago which was called uh, this one which was called um, Martin Gore versus Alan Wilder where we discussed the dynamic between Alan Wilder and Martin Gore that video has now received over 10,000 views and I say that not to brag to you but just just to let you know that I'm so grateful I was not expecting it I'm slightly overwhelmed and I think I may have opened Pandora's box uh, on the subject of Depeche Mode because this has proved to me that there are so many out, so many of you out there that are so interested and the subjects which I'm discussing are resonating with you and I'm so happy to talk about these subjects. And there's been no criticism really, it's just been, there's been some, there's, and there's been a lot of constructive feedback which I welcome and I'm so grateful for. And some of the constructive feedback was, um, I'm not remaining on topic. <laughs> <laughs> and I know and that is something I um, I have to address on these videos obviously these are early days but obviously as the channel progresses things will become more streamlined I, ne I never wanted to get to a point where it's so slick that it loses its sincerity and it's because this is me and this is the way I am so I don't want to ever uh, I, I want to become a better version of me but I, I don't want to sort of be I don't want this to become so corporate and serious and I really want this the whole idea of this channel is I want you, as you're watching this, to feel as the, as if though you're sitting in a room with me and we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, because that really is the the idea behind this. I'm so happy to talk about something that I like about, and and as, as, and as some of you have sympathised with me, is that Depeche Mode fans are a lot of people know about Depeche Mode, but a lot of people are like, oh yeah, Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode's like. It, it, it really is an acquired taste. It's not for everyone. I find with Depeche Mode, people are never really lukewarm to it. They either, they tend to like it or hate it. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those things and, and I happen to love it and I'm so happy through this channel I can reach out to like-minded people like you who happen to love what I'm talking about. Okay, so the, this video I'm just going to divide into two sections and the first section of this video I'm going to talk about the subject today which is Peter Gordino with Depeche Mode. And and the second session, I'm just going to, the second section of the video. I'm just going to talk to you about um, some some of the subjects moving forward. Okay, so with all those subjects we've been talking about Depeche Mode in the last several videos, as I say, so many, so many, so many different types of uh, comments, feedback, suggestions. Please, can you talk about this? Elaborate on this. And um, and one of the questions that came up in quite a few of these threads was, and people asked me personally, Vaughan, what do you think of Peter Gordino? Um, just off the bat, how do I feel about Peter Gordino? I've got no objections to Peter Gordino. I, I would go as far as to say I like the man. I think he's, you know, he's obviously had to fill big shoes. Alan's shoes are very big shoes to fill and it doesn't matter who replaced Alan. I wouldn't say he replaced Alan. I would say he got Alan's job. That's quite a good distinction because I think Alan was irreplaceable. And how do I feel about that? Well. As I say, um, it would be interesting if it was the other way around. Imagine if Peter Gordino was an original member of Depeche Mode and then left and then was replaced by Alan Wilder. Rem remember that nostalgia does sort of tend to cloud our judgment. So Peter Gordino, yes, very competent, very, very good musician. He's able to hold it together. And as a lot of you pointed out to me, actually, you know, I forget because time goes so fast is that Peter Gordino and Christian indeed have been, they have been in Depeche Mode for longer than what uh, Alan Wilder has. I mean, Alan Wilder was in, was it 83 to 95, so what was that, 12 years? And Gordino started in 1998, so he's effectively been in Depeche Mode for what, what's that, over 20 years. So that sh just shows how time flies. Any criticisms I may have about Peter Gordino are more about, are not so much him as a musician, it's more about the sound selection. 
And what I mean by that is if we look at certain songs and uh, there's a few myths which some of you have um, brought to the channel um, and which has, which has been an interesting discussion and that was the, the subject of you know when Alan Wilder sold all his old gear. He did that series where he did, he did auctions and he sold all his old Emac synthesizers, drum kits, pianos and everything from the Depeche Mode period. Now um, why he decided to sell sell all that stuff uh, is, is, is a personal reason to Alan. Some people like to say it was financial reasons. I, I do not know so I do not want to delve into that. But then of course some people seem to think that because Alan sold all his equipment uh, and he had all his banks of sounds, Depeche Mode, because he sold everything, Depeche Mode no, no longer have access to those sounds. Now, I find that quite strange. Um, I, I hear in the live performances, when, when especially on songs like um, Behind the Wheel, and, and there's a few other examples, and even the a few of the lead melody sounds on World In My Eyes, some of the sounds to me that, that Peter are playing do not sound like the original samples. And and that is, and some of you have got the theory, and that is because Alan had all the samples and he he sold them all. Now, to you, um, fascinating idea. You must remember that I have been able to get a hold of the original Alan Wilder samples here, and there are a lot of them floating around the internet, and a lot of people have access to those. So if I'm able to get a hold of the original Alan Wilder samples, there's no reason why Depeche Mode would not be able to get get hold of those samples as well. So. Um, I, I don't believe uh, that is the reason why the sounds are different. But if, if I can make any, if I can just point out um, uh, what I mean. For example, if we take the song Behind the Wheel, um, if you listen to the recent versions of Behind the Wheel after Alan Wilder left, and you will notice um, this sound. Okay, now, as you know, guys, I've, these are the original samples I've, I've, I've got from the Alan Wilder bank. You will notice that in recent times, that sound is not the same. And I know this sounds incredibly geeky, but of course, these videos are for real hardcore Depeche Mode fans. That particular sound to me is meant to be... Now, excuse that, that's weird, what I just did, but it has kind of like a... It has a little bit of a, like a, a honky kind of sound to it. I don't know... It almost sounds like they've sampled like a sitar or something. Um, I don't know. I would love to hear from some of you fellow geeks as to what you think. It seems to have like a pad sound behind it as well. The bottom line, what I'm, what I'm saying is that particular sound, it's very iconic. And listen to any of the recent performances, it doesn't it goes ding 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 and I'm like no it's not meant to go ding 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 it's meant to go bang 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 like a do I sound mad but you know what I'm getting at so there are many examples but um it is for this reason I I'm quite purist and I just find that I, I just find that in, in in recent concerts anything from the sort of wilder period that Gordino is playing it's clear to me that they're not using the original samples. Um, they, they've, they've regenerated the sounds using an access virus, um, which is an incredible synthesizer, by the way. What I'm saying is they've regenerated the sounds, and it, to me, it doesn't sound like they're using a lot of the original Alan Wilder sounds. Now, let's discuss that. Another example would be on a song like Never Let Me Down Again. Now, looking again at the original Alan Wilder samples, He's got that, he's got that uh, iconic sort of guitar sample, which is... And then there's the ding... Um, uh, Obviously that's not the right sound, so I think the... I think that was played by probably um, Martin. What I'm illustrating now is if, if you listen to Alan Wilder's part, he'd go... And then it goes, I'm taking a ride with... And when it gets to the, um, the bridge... That would be Alan's part. What I'm illustrating here is... Remember, Alan is a... a uh, Alan is a classically trained pianist, so... For him to play this is, is, is it's a very simple part though. But 
But regardless of the fact that Alan is a genius on the piano, he showed restraint and played it as simply as it was on the record. I hope I'm making sense. Whereas Peter would, um, he, he would, he kind of seems to jam it more than, unlike Alan, which would just go, which is kind of um, true to the, the recording. Uh, Peter seems to be more like, You know, it's, he kind of so Peter kind of jams more, and it's this kind of it's this jamming sound that he does that, that, that sometimes gives the patch mode. And I've said this in the previous video. It kind it kind of gives their live sound a more of a like a tribute band kind of feel. Um, and of course, that's quite a, a, a completely different subject. Is and it must be quite boring, I suppose, when you go live every night just to play. Uh, these same parts over and over and also because of the nature of Depeche Mode's, Depeche Mode's music is it's electronic and I, I spoke in a previous video how a lot of the parts although they're simple um, they're very iconic parts like if we take now anyone can do that it's just um, but then again uh, it, it, it's you just need to hit it at the right time because if you don't land it on the beat it's going to be out of out of sync with, with the backing track the whole idea with the Depeche Mode's music is there was always lots and lots of layers, simple layers um, layered together to, to to form the wall of sound, which we, we know as Depeche Mode. Um, and then, very simple sounds, but they're very iconic. And I find that a lot of these iconic sounds are missing from the current lineup of live, from the current lineup and the current live sound. And of course we can geek out about that uh, as much as we want. So that's my only sort of criticism, and it's not really a criticism, it's just a, a, it's just a taste. It's more like a comment on, uh, whereas Alan Wilder, would, he tended to show more restraint. He'd go. Whereas, as I said, Gordino would be more. You know, he'd kind of jam it more. Right, and where um, Peter Gordino really does shine, he's got a very, 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 very good touch on the piano. He's got a very, very good, very, very good touch. And as I say, he's got a great, 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 him and, Mar him and Martin sing really well together. As I say, where he really shines is on, on, on the ballads. Um, obviously, when they do that section with the ballads, that's the chance Dave gets to, because Dave puts a lot into the performances, so it's, it, this is his chance to go off and just you know, have a drink or chill out for uh, a few minutes. Um, I do love Shake the Disease. I'm not going down on my knees begging you to adore me Can't you see it's misery and torture for me That's not exactly how he plays it, but he does give, he He's got a really good touch. It's 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 very. He lets Martin lead. He kind of just follows Martin. He lets Martin lead. He's a very different type of pianist to um, Alan Wilder. Um, not in a bad way or a good way. He's 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 just different. Whatever Peter is doing now is is. I I don't think they could get any better than what than Peter because I I think he's fabulous. The last gig I went to, I was so happy to hear when they did. Um, See if you recognize this one.
remain on topic. <laughs> so yeah, many examples of that, and that could be another video where we just examine the piano ballads, bet uh, which um, which Martin and Peter do together. So yeah, to sum it up, Peter Gordino is absolutely fantastic. Um, he looks good on stage, he carries himself well, and he's one hell of a competent musician, and he gives he gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Okay guys, so on to the second section of this video, I wanna race through this very quickly. I just wanna sort of point out to you what we've got in line. A lot of, I've had no complaints about the Depeche Mode videos, because a lot of people are thinking this is an exclusively Depeche Mode <laughs> channel. Uh, it's not. I, I, I do aim to please, so and, and I love talking about the subject, but I just want to sort of quickly point out to you a few other subjects which we're going to talk, talk about um, uh, over the next few months. Um, and I'm going to, I'm just going to tell you what, what the subjects are, and these are going to, these are going to be um, published every Sunday and Wednesday. If, if you would subscribe, if you haven't already, and hit the little bell notification, it will notify you every time um, I uh, release a video, and I am aiming to do two videos a week. Uh, I feel that way I can maintain the quality of the content. I want to go more for quality rather than quantity. Having said that, I've got a lot of subjects I want to talk about, and I am, as you guys can see, I am at the moment, I'm responding to every single message um, where possible. On, on that, um, I will get to a point where I won't be able to humanly do that, but um, I will carry on responding to everyone and I'm so grateful to you guys for for your inter, inter, interactions and feedback I'm really I'm having a blast okay so some of the subjects coming up are um, I'm doing a video called Dave gone uh, the the evolution of an icon and in this video I'll be talking about Dave gone how he you know how he started off as a, a young fresh-faced teenager to the sort of rock star which he was and is now another one we're doing is called uh, Depeche Mode live sound past and present um, and in this video I'm going to examine how Depeche Mode's live sound has evolved sort of from the beginning up until now. Another subject we'll be discussing is Gore and Gone vocals past and present and in that we're going to discuss um, as some of you have pointed out how Martin's voice has changed over the years and so has Dave's as well, obviously your voice does change as you get older and we're going to discuss how the, the changes in the how their voices have changed. Also doing a video on Depeche Mode 101, which was their, uh, which one of their most iconic recordings ever, and we're going to uh, look at that concert in detail. Erasure, synth pop perfection. I'm going to be doing a video on Erasure, and this will be like a general, um, a general sort of look at Erasure and uh, their songs, their sound, how they started, how it's progressed. Another subject, OMD, pure melodic magic, and uh, OMD, also one of my all-time favorite uh, acts, and um, this video is going to examine, uh, it's going to be sort of like a general chat about OMD. Also coming up is Pet Shop Boys, and I call this one Intellectual Pop Brilliance, and uh, Pet Shop Boys to me were kind of like the intellectuals in electronic pop music, and uh, we're going to discuss uh, the Pet Shop Boys in this, in, in this video. Talk Talk is another act I want to talk about. Talk Talk to me were always like one of the most underrated bands of the 80s. They never really, in my opinion, got the recognition that they deserved and uh, we also want to talk about the vocal sound and, and the style of Mark Hollis. Rest in peace, Mark Hollis. Right guys, so these are all subjects that are inspired by you. Another thing that's worth mentioning is I want to give a shout out to uh, one of my regular subscribers, Shane Parry. It, it was Shane that asked me to do the, the, the original sort of Fletch video because he said please do a video on Fletch because and uh, so I did the video on Fletch and he's come up with Shane has come up with another brilliant idea now he said to me he said to me Vaughan why don't you do like a, a monthly uh, um, special on Fletch and I'm giving you full credit for this idea uh, Shane uh, so don't take me to court <laughs> and uh, we're going to do a special on Fletch probably once every month and we're going to call it the Fletch Files <laughs> and uh, it's going to be qu quite a light-hearted little segment where we all kind of discuss Fletch and what he's up to and you know did you see Fletch in a restaurant or you know uh, yeah we're going to keep it light-hearted and it's all about Fletch. Uh, Fletch. Let's talk about Fletch baby! <laughs> I often wonder if uh, Everything Counts wasn't inspired by Fletch. The clapping hands clap all they can everything counts in large amounts <laughs> I also want to make a special shout out to a, uh, a, a big Depeche Mode fan, a devotee called Ash Nero. And Ash is the administrator and one of the uh, facilitators of the 
uh, group on Facebook. Do check them out. I'm going to put a link to them below. And they are called Alan Wilder Back to Depeche Mode. And this is a this is a great group. Um, they've been very supportive to me. They've been uh, sharing my videos. And I'm so grateful to you guys. And I want to say hello to everyone in the Alan Wilder Back to Depeche Mode group. I love the name of that group. It's just like it does what it says in the tin. They're well worth supporting. Do uh, do jump in and uh, you know um, become a member. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep talking, guys. I'm really having a blast with the channel. Right, guys. Once again, I just want to say thank you so much. I am so grateful, um, overwhelmed in a great way. And this this channel, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to wake up earlier or just find more time to do everything. I'm loving this channel, guys, and I'm and I love you guys so much for for your your, your enthusiasm and support. So. Let's keep it going and I look forward to seeing you next, uh, next time in the next video. Thanks guys.